Okay. All right. So, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Legadison, President of Football and Futsal Club. Um, I'm currently doing my Bachelor of uh, Mechanical Engineering uh, in Imperium International College. And I'm, I will be the moderator of today's uh, webinar. All right. So, on this marvelous day, our topic will be sports involvement of Malaysian university students. All right. So, here we have uh, our presidents. All right. Our three presidents are here. All right. So, let's welcome our presidents. Uh, first of all, we look for Shin Yu. All right. So, let's introduce yourself, bro. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Lee Shin Yu, and uh, I'm the president for Basketball Club. And uh, I've been right. studying in Imperium International College for three years now. And it's my second year in business management for Imperium International College. All right. Okay. Thank you, bro. And next, we go with uh, Ryan. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Ryan. Uh, I am currently pursuing a degree in mechanical engineering in Imperium College. All right. Yeah. I'm the president for volleyball club in Imperium. All right. Okay. So last, we go with uh, Desmond. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Desmond, and I'm the president for Badminton and Tennis Club. Uh, currently, I'm pursuing my degree in Imperium International College uh, in my third year now. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So here we see uh, our uh, Imperium International College presidents. They look so handsome. All right. So, <laughs> so shall we begin with our my first questions here? Okay. Okay. I have a few questions to ask you all. Okay. So we just want to share about like uh, how the involvements of the sports. Okay. Towards the students. All right. Towards the universities. So here first. Um, let explain about your club, all right? All right. So we start with Shin Yu. Okay. Uh, so I've been the president for this basketball Imperial Basketball Club for the past three years now. Uh, so back right. in twenty seventeen, the reason why I started this uh, basketball club was because, uh, my me myself, I've been playing basketball for over ten years, and I didn't want this uh -huh. to stop, and I want to implement something. Uh, like an activity in help, I mean, Imperium International College. So, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, the club was founded basically to just gather everyone with a common interest, which is basketball. Yeah. All right. That's my Thank you, Shin Yu. All right. So next we go with uh, Desmond. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, uh, to be honest, I wasn't a badminton player uh, since I was <laughs> until the year 2016. <laughs> when I first started joining my diploma in mechanical engineering in Imperium yeah. International College. Right. I started to play badminton and all is because thanks to my friend, uh, or my classmate, my classmate. Because on that including day, me, yeah, including you, uh, you're my classmate. <laughs> <laughs> but then because uh, yeah, okay. uh, my classmate are uh, the one who invite me to play badminton for the first time. And the first time when I played, I find that badminton is very fun. It's a very fun sport and an mm -hmm. easy sport to play. So from that, Day onwards, I started to like badminton. So during that time, uh, during my studies, I found out that my college, uh, their badminton club wasn't and um, uh, wasn't active. So there's not much. Uh, there's no badminton session. Uh, from that club lah, from that year mm -hmm. club. So most of the time, I normally play with my classmate only badminton. All right. So when I continue my degrees in mechanical engineering in Imperial International College, my friend and I decided that. Why not just we take over this inactive club and just make this club active again? Right? So right. the reason we took this club, this took over this badminton club is because that we want to find more badminton players like us you know, to have more competitive or maybe a more competitive gameplay or maybe just a recreation gameplay. Not mm -hmm. only that, but, uh, we also hope we also hope to assemble students and also staff that have the common interest in playing badminton. Right. And, or tennis. Uh. So next, uh, we also want to give opportunity to those who did not have the chance to play uh, these sports because uh, they don't have uh, friends or partner to play with. Yeah. So on the other hand, for my tennis club, actually it's just a newly formed club mm -hmm. uh, by my team. <coughs> the reason... <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Uh, 
the reason that we want decided to have a tennis club is right. because that we want to promote this sports to students and staff. Because tennis mm -hmm. is also actually is a very fun sports to play. It's actually just the same as badminton. The only difference is that tennis court is bigger and wider than a badminton court, and uh, they use tennis ball to play instead of shuttlecocks. Uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, as I also said earlier that uh, uh, for my reason also that when we form this tennis club, we also want to give chances for students or staff to participate and try to play this tennis as their sports because yeah. some of them do not have uh, don't have friends or partner to play with. Uh. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I want to share also uh, that normally our session for badminton, badminton session we normally play is uh, we normally play on every Tuesday and Thursday the schedule will be around 6 to 8 p.m. or right. uh, 8 to 10 p.m. This one is, we choose this time is because that uh, it depends, because we have, every student and staff have a different class schedule. So yes. we just make it like after working hours. Lah. So All everybody right. will be, should be fine with it. As All for right. tennis, since that we are just currently a newly formed club, mm -hmm. so that uh, we just plan to have a session on every Saturday uh, mm -hmm. around 9 to 11 a.m. in the morning. Right. Or uh, five to seven in the evening, uh, depending on the schedules of the student and staff also. Yeah, that's all. Mm. So you uh, you are being president of uh, both clubs, is it? Uh, yes, yes. Correct. So it may be a bit uh, difficult for you, because like, you have to balance it like both the team as well, yeah, right? Yeah, true. Yeah. But then I'll take it as a challenge, like, as a, cha a new challenge for me because, yeah, uh, for me, it's a new challenge because uh, normally I just I only be able to handle one club. So now that I'm giving uh, another job to handle in a, uh, two club, so I believe that this will be a good learning experience for me mm -hmm. and also for my team la, in the future time. Yeah. So this is uh, our example, uh, Imperium International uh, students is here actually as a president. So we can see that. So, okay. So next we go with uh, Ryan. So tell me right. about you. All right, so for volleyball club, uh, it was formed by a student of Imperial yeah. College. Uh, what happened was that he's been playing uh, uh, volleyball since high school. And then uh, when going to college, he wanted to continue that sport there, you know, and also uh, share it to his friends. So he then that's how a volleyball club was formed. Now, mm -hmm. um, the club in itself, it's because most of the players are not experienced, right? So he, yes. uh, yeah. most of the time we devote our time to teaching people how to to, to play the sport, you know, from really just training people from scratch, lah, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, take it right, right? Is we are playing it recreationally. We we play it with uh for fun, and just for uh, uh how to say uh, the community and to build community and help uh connect to people uh connect with people, you know. Right. Uh, so yeah. Uh, in terms of competitiveness, I think uh we don't focus at as much, but there's always room for for that. So like we would go for um. Uh, the the only known uh, competition we will go for is sports carnival where we uh, represent uh, Imperium to play against other uh, unis, you know. But yeah, mm -hmm. besides that, I think uh, volleyball club in itself, the the culture of it, it's for uh, it's not emph emphasis on trying to uh, uh, train and become a very like state athlete or whatnot, but you know just to welcome yes. people uh, to come yes. to learn a new sport to uh, to fellowship with one another that kind of thing. You know, and it's, yes. it's, all I know is a good, is a fun club, man. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Thanks for the introduction, boys. Okay. So now that we know uh, Imperium International College, like it's a very much need to bring out uh, the Eden athletes right, within like each one of us, right? So because there's going to be a lot of students, okay? We're going to bring up to uh, a lot of, uh, how to say, like, uh, uh, there are going to be a lot of competition, right? So we're going to involve on it. So it's going to be very uh, interesting for upcoming students, right? All right. All right. So now for the next agenda, all right. What do you think about sports in universities? And how do you think sports will benefit fellow students of Imperium International College? So again, we start with uh, Shin Yu. So... So... Sports in tertiary education, it really improves the mental health. By studies in university, generally, we will have a more increased workload and more stress, tension. But sports is one of the ways to release all this tension and improves the mental health. 
so I say that it should be a habit to have sport uh, in, in your study days because uh, when you're having too much, let's say you're having too much in a day, right? So, so what happens is you tend to be overstressed. So you can call you can call your club members, your friends to go have mm-hmm. a sport game for me, basketball. So we have a basketball session to just release, uh, you know, loosen things up. Don't be too over, overstressed. And that friend in particular, you can share your problems to him as well. Yeah. So it doesn't really need to be like uh, competitive during the basketball games. It can be just leisure, mm-hmm. just have fun, release your tension out there. So benefits, when we talk about benefits, I think that uh, it really uh, and strong, strengthen the friendship be- between your club members and your friends, whoever is going to basketball with you. And another benefit is that I think financially, financially it benefits an individual when, uh, when you are, at, let's say for that particular spot, you're re- representing your state or your country, uh, scholarship, sport scholarships are offered to these players who are representing oh. the state or the country. So it really reduces, yeah, it reduces the burden of an individual okay. financially. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the benefits. All right, thank so thank you, man, thank you. All right, so next we go with uh, Desmond. Yeah, okay, uh, so that uh, sports I sh- I consider actually I consider sports as uh, important as academics. Students need to participate in sports as much as studying for exams lah for me. Because uh, sports can promote uh, physical benefits such as uh, by participating in any sports right you have a healthier and stronger body. Healthier and stronger body meaning that uh, students won't get sick easily lah. Basically because uh, they have a stronger immune system in them. So yeah, so uh, even under stress. A uh, student will still be fine because their yeah. body is their immune system is quite strong, so can protect them. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, students uh, sports also can help students to become more flexible and increase in their fitness level. So for the in the long run, uh, common problems such as your joint pain, your joint pain normally is like around your ankle, your knee, your elbow. This all can be actually uh, beaten later in life lah, when you get older. So other than that, uh, I believe sports also can promote friendships. Because in my in college, normally our friends are within our department. We uh because uh, we do not go, we do not see other students. Uh. in my college, we do not see, we do not meet other uh, other students from other department. It's because that our class normally is located at different floors. So like example, uh, for me when I started my college, my degree. Normally, uh, my, my degree mechanical engineering uh, floor department is located at uh, sixth floor. And maybe right. example, take it as ACCA accounting is located at uh, level four, fourth floor. So normally when I come to college, I will normally just hang out at level six because that's my department. That's where I study. That's where my class is. That's where I hang out with my friend. Yeah, basically, I, I that's the purpose I go to college, just to be there like, with my friend, yeah. hang out, classes, study, yeah. Unlike that, because uh, we, there's no point for us to go to other department floors because uh, I find it there's no purpose. Like, what's the point you go there when you have no, you have nothing, you have no agenda doing, doing at that floor. So that's what kept us from seeing each other and making friends in college. So, but then right. when I, after I took over this club, badminton club, and I started promoting and invite students from every department to join, mm-hmm. to play badminton. Uh, I found out that actually I become friends with all those other students from different departments. Uh, yeah, so basically I can say that uh, sports is actually another way to actually build friendships and also increase our circle of friendships. Yeah, that's my thing. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. And uh, how about Riley? Hi. How about you? Uh, I think uh, it's 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 intrinsic to have a sports club in a uh, or sports in in university in specific. Uh, you know, besides the benefits of improving your mental and physical state, I think uh, more than anything else, it's a platform 
for students to work on and develop other new skills. So, for example, yeah. in a classroom setting, right, and when you're in a lecture hall and everything, it's really hard to engage with your lecturers, right? They probably just go through what they need to go through in a topic. And if you're lucky, maybe you can have a meeting with the teacher or one or two sessions like that. But, you know, having uh, to have clubs, right, uh, sports clubs or any uh, societies, right, you uh, engage in very valuable conversation, whether be it about sport, be it about uh, day-to-day life activity, you know, it's just basically that community where you could come and, you know, it's very easily accessible for, for other students as well, you know, and besides just communication skills, you work on uh, developing other skills, right? For, for example, sports, you, there are certain things that you need to do to really keep your body in tip-top condition, right? So you learn about these different methods to keep your bodies healthy, Right, and then right. hence promoting a healthier lifestyle and habit, right? Yeah. And then uh, yeah. besides yeah. that, you know, right. even being as a member, right, uh, there are still opportunities where you could uh, develop leadership skills, right? So uh, yeah. mm-hmm. even as a member, you look out for other people, right? Even as a member, yes. you, you are a leader towards yourself on that playing field uh, or in any club and society. And then, uh, you know, if you want to expand your skill your leadership skills even more you know uh to come get serious in the sport pick up a captain role you know take up a, a role in the community and then uh really from there you just sharpen and brush up your skills uh as a as a as a person uh as a leader you know and also it's uh yeah it's, it's really good practice platform it's a really good uh, platform for people yes. to really want to get get into developing these skills yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. All right. So thank you. Thank you, residents. Okay. So in like, uh, in summary, like we can conclude that sports activities only brings the best out of each one of us, right? So sports activities also serve as a tool mm. for the betterment of the society and students of uh, Imperium International College. Okay. As what like uh, our residents has been said. Okay. So here we can, uh, uh, there's a lot of like, uh, tools like they have been used and they can improvise. I think the um, depends on the like skills and all, uh, they can be improvised also. All right, we can see from here, all right. So now that we know how in, uh, important sports are, okay. So let's see how far these clubs uh, have come in terms of achievements under Imperium International College, right? So seeing you, Let's talk about your yeah. achievement. All right. So, as I say, we are really active uh, basketball club. So, for the mm-hmm. pre- past three years, we have been hosting a uh, sports carnival. So, back in 2017, it is my first time hosting uh, such an event, which is a basketball mm-hmm. carnival. All I right. made it into a department versus department, which is like uh, business studies versus uh, ACCA kind of thing, or maybe engineering versus mm-hmm. uh, business, the kind of thing, yeah. So 2018, uh, I hosted a uh, diff- same basketball carnival, but I changed the rule a little bit, which is I mixed category, which means that anyone under the roof of Imperium International College can be a team. It doesn't really need to be a, a department or department or anything. So any uh, of your friends from different departments can come together as a team to participate in, uh, the, tournament, okay, okay. in the basketball carnival, sorry. And I hosted twice in 2018 because the response was really good. Mm-hmm. And 2019, the rules are similar. I, I mean, sorry, I host an event, the same event, but the rules are a little bit different this time. I, right. I, uh, I included staffs into the game, which means that staffs are allowed to participate in this event. Staff, oh. Whether you are staff, you're a student, as long as you're under the roof of Imperium International College, you are allowed. Participate. So it's like yeah. everyone is like mixed up, like, it means, yeah. yeah, we're encouraged to you know participate in sports. Okay. Right. And then uh, lastly, mm-hmm. in 2020, mm-hmm. uh, we, I held the uh, three on three versus three because uh, uh, the uh, due to the recent pandemic, everyone was a bit uh, you know worried about their life. So. Uh-huh. I hosted a three on three to just have fun. You know, I can't make a five on five because the numbers weren't enough. Yes. So, yeah. so I've hosted this event so far. Thank you. All right, all right. So that's really a good achievement, man. And we're really looking forward 
for your clubs and everything. So let's see about uh, Desmond. How about your club achievements? Yeah. Uh, and there's actually, have, uh, another yeah. another club also, right? Yeah, we have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, recently, actually, to be honest, uh, badminton club, I've just taken over recently. That's around uh, January, early January this year. And with the current pandemic, as you guys know, COVID uh, has actually put our sports activity on hold. So uh, there's not much achievement for, for my club. But then, right. uh, I don't know this whether it's an achievement or not, but I can just say that my club managed to unite every student from every department in our college together. Basically, basically it's also like our club became the bridge to a new friendship for students. Yeah. So... Also, as for tennis club, again, this is also a very, very recent club that I just formed also. I think mm -hmm. it's actually it's during the MC or RSPO period like, I just formed. So we do not have any chance to help any activity or session yet. But then in the future, right. yeah, in the future, my team hopes that we help. We will have an inter-tournament between students, students studying in Premium International College for back, mm -hmm. uh for badminton and tennis, as well as also inter-college tournament for the students. Okay. That's my hope for the future. <laughs> That's all. all right. Thank you, Desmond. So let's see about Ryan. All right. Uh, for volleyball club. Right. So I have joined uh, the volleyball club in the year 2017 um, as mm. a member. And then ever since then, I've uh, participated two, uh, two competitions with the team. Right, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, competitions be it sport carnival 2018 and 2019. Uh, unfortunately, we did not win anything, but uh, I think that's not the again because our club is focusing more on developing players, it's not really uh, a, a team of like superstar players, right? People we start training people from scratch and all that, so uh, uh, you know, we don't have that high of an expectation. Right, okay. but um, okay. I'm I, I still see it as achievement because in the two years, right, I've seen uh, ourselves growing uh, from mm -hmm. not being on 2018 not being able to win a match uh, to 2019 being able to uh, win two matches and hold against the uh, the the champion of that tournament. Right, we we put up a good fight and all, overall, I I think that was a great achievement. That's just seeing yeah. people grow and develop themselves and become better in that sport. Right. Uh, one of the other prouder, uh, proud achievements that we have is uh, yeah. how we achieve uh, a high level of gender equality in the, mm -hmm. in the club, right? So we provide, uh, for me, I emphasize on uh, the team aspect of the sport, right? No one man can carry a, a team sport, right? Uh, volleyball is a six yes. versus six. Everyone yes. plays a very important role in the team, right? And uh, because we are playing mixed, so there is uh, male, uh, men and women as well in the team as well. Right, so we mm -hmm. develop, uh, we develop both men and women equally. Uh, we provide mm -hmm. uh, equal chances for them as well to 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 grow, um, to to have a slot in the tournament and and everything, and also our attention towards uh, developing them. So yeah, and it, it's great because like you know, in in the sports scene in Malaysia, I feel like it's always leans toward a very male dominant kind of scene, right? Eventually, like. Uh, when you play a game, it's we we only yes. pass it to the guys. You know, net, the girls would go into the game and never play anything. I hate to see that. I really do because, uh, you know, if I were them, you, you would be thinking like, why did why am I committing so much time and uh, my efforts yeah. to come and just to be mm -hmm. on the court and not touch the ball, right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. you no, know, yeah. So I I always uh, that's why I always emphasize about team and always develop people equally and also utilizing everyone on on team and especially in Malaysia, we have great female athletes. We, we really do. We Women's in Malaysia, mm -hmm. they are good at sport. We just, some sometimes some people just don't see that and it's it's a shame. So that's why I always emphasize on, you know, having to, to train the girls, uh, having to develop the, the women uh, women's, uh, sports and, you know, yeah, I think that was pretty good. All right. right. All right that's all, right. all for me. All right. So... Here we have uh, one uh, questions actually. All right. So like, uh, how do how do you guys have bonding with uh, members? It means right? members, especially after the activities. Oh, so young star. 
Oh yeah, normally I would try this one. <laughs> for for my for my experience, uh, basically yeah, it's like mama mama shop, right? Mama yeah. shop. Normally after during, right? after you play a session, we always plan for going to have a dinner to have, to bond our friendship together, to bond more, to get to know uh to get to know our friends more. So mm. uh, by this like for my bonding is like we normally just go mama and just have an open chat mm. lunch. Yes, nice. Yeah. <laughs> so all right. So get inside, boys. Like, uh, it's it it is clear that Imperium International College clubs are very very like active, and uh, you you guys are doing like uh, really like great, and you're bringing to next uh, stage. I can I can see that. Okay, all right. And students can be so interested, right, to join part of uh, clubs and everything, because right? like. Last time when when I was joined, okay, there was like no nothing like uh, this much of like uh, how to say like uh, 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 like a uh, training purpose, you know, you know, right? So, and this and all these things lah. So now I can see like y'all guys have put a, like a lot of work on it, and the students must be like very very like interest lah, right? To be part of it. So um. As the last questions, all right. So kindly explain how your sports is played by Malaysia. All right. So start with the uh, team. Okay. In basketball in Malaysia, there are actually two styles, which is the tournament style and the public park style. Tournament style, which is the the most formal one, uh, twelve players aside, five on five on the court, which means ten players on the court. So the park style would be four versus four on one side of the court involving only one basket. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you when you don't have uh, eight players for four and four in the park style, you can uh, just total up the number of people and just divide by two to form a team. For instance, uh, six of y'all. So you just divide by two, so three a team aside. And then uh, uh, Malaysian Basketball Association has really done a good job in... Uh, uh, training their players. Uh, continuing from Ryan's point, women's uh, women's category basketball really did a good job. They won the Sea Games champion in 2017, and they are ranked right. 67 in the FIBA International Basketball. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Well, uh, however, um, men, uh, they're trying to they're improving themselves as well. Right? So, what I'm trying to say is, uh. Malaysia sport is really uh, doing a good job. Yeah. Thanks for coming. All right. Thank you. Okay. That's good, bro. And how about you, Desmond? Oh, well, uh, basically, it's an easy question, actually. Because badminton <laughs> is actually well-known in, in Malaysia. I bet, like, every Malaysia has at least played one time, right, badminton in their life, right? You guys have it, right? Yeah. So, yeah, basically, course, uh, yeah. badminton is actually a... Uh, a sports where you can actually play everywhere. You know, mm -hmm. just you just mm -hmm. make sure that you bring two rackets and a few shuttlecock and you can start playing it. Either it's outside of your house, a few right. uh playgrounds everywhere. Lah. Our normal yeah. our normal tradition to play badminton is like whoever live at terrace house, then you guys know mm -hmm. how lah. your your gate is your net. That's all. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So uh also yeah, like and I think also if you guys want to uh if you guys want to play badminton in uh, badminton court, there's nothing to be worried really about because there's a lot of badminton court in Malaysia. Lah. Like for in KL, I can tell you that around five to seven, every five to seven kilometers, confirm mm -hmm. you'll find one at this one badminton center. All right. yeah. That's how, how popular badminton is. Lah. So uh yeah, another question is like, I want to ask you guys, you guys heard of Dato Li Chongwei, right? Yeah, definitely. Confirm, yeah, right? Yes, course. right. Uh, Even the uh, small kids also can be seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which Malaysian doesn't, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you guys know, he's also recognized as our national hero. He's also a legend, badminton legend, and known to be the most successful badminton player in the world. Right? Yeah. So I want to yeah. share with you some of his achievements. Uh, yeah. So that he held the record for both the most total number of weeks seated at world ranking number one of a total mm -hmm. weeks of 349 weeks, which is about mm -hmm. uh, six years and eight months, and a consecutive seated at world number one ranking seat 
uh, of 199 weeks, which is about uh, three years and nine months. That's a long, I mean, that yeah. totally has been sitting at world that's number really one, true. seated for like four years, you know, four years in a row. So that's power. So he also, he's also recognized as the only player who has won every Super Series uh, title mm -hmm. in the tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Besides that, Dato Li Chongwei is also a three-time Olympic silver medalist and also a three-time world champion silver medalist. Not to forget that uh, besides Dato Li Chongwei, there's also other Malaysians who actually make Malaysia props. Uh. They are actually uh, Mandabas, uh, Govisham, and Tan uh, oh. Again, You guys heard of it, right? Hello. Yeah, right. I think they got they got uh, part of the Olympic also, right? Yes. Olympic. They are actually they also they reached the highest ranking of world number one also in men doubles, mm -hmm. and also they are also have won a silver medal in Olympic uh, twenty sixteen Rio Rio Brazil. Yeah. yeah. Other, another pair was uh, is also a mixed doubles, Champing mm -hmm. and Go Liuin. This pair uh, reached a uh, highest world ranking of world number three. And they also okay. has won. Uh, they also won a silver medal in twenty sixteen, Rio Olympic. Yeah. So yeah, for tennis, unfortunately, tennis is not that well known in Malaysia. There are only a few few Malaysians who actually play tennis. Uh, from from what I see, I I only saw some, uh, not just very few. So one of the reason, uh, because tennis court is very hard to find. It's not like badminton court where it's everywhere. The limited tennis court is also because the tennis court size is very uh, require a big size, uh, a big space yeah. to build in. Mm -hmm. I can say that uh, one tennis court to build one tennis court is like uh, four times of a badminton court. So normally, uh, which space uh, government will normally build a badminton court more than a tennis court, right? Because it saves more space. Yeah, and you can build more courts. You know? Yeah, another reason is also that tennis is not a sport where you can play everywhere. It requires a large space, uh, as I said just now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I can say that many Malaysians doesn't will, will not choose tennis as their main sport, uh, but then they can play it as a hobby, but then not as their main sports or making a career. But it's just very few of them. So in the future, I would say that Malaysia tennis won't be as popular as badminton. Yeah. That's all. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Desmond. And Ryan, it's your turn. Right. Uh, so the volleyball scene in Malaysia, uh, in international games, uh, we don't do so well. <laughs> right. We, um, we are outsized by um, European countries, right? Like people from Brazil, uh, teams from France, they're, they're huge, right? Compared to uh, players in Malaysia. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, even uh, within the Southeast uh, Asia games, we also don't uh, do so well, right? Uh, we usually get, uh, for a Malaysian team, for the 2017 uh, SEA Games, got eliminated on the prelim rounds, you know. Uh, so, yeah, in, in, in that sense, it's not doing so great. Uh, but then again, uh, now there are, because uh, volleyball is a government-supported sport, right? You can see in high school, uh, or some sports school, and it's played quite commonly uh, in those places. So, uh, and then more, more than that, uh, the Malaysian Volleyball Association has also uh, come up with uh, youth development programs, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, different other sports clinics, uh, uh, they, they'll conduct, uh, they've been conducting it all over Malaysia and all, you know, trying to develop the youth um, and train them to be uh, better athletes. So uh, with, that being, uh, with that being said, I think uh, we have a better hope a better future for the for the for for the uh, Malaysian volleyball um, in the future you know yeah so that's that's how it is now for the volleyball scene in Malaysia all right so thank you boys like uh, these sports widely played in Malaysia right so if you guys can join this club okay be a great opportunity okay to indulge uh, like yourself with the uh, Malaysian culture actually right so yeah. i think like um, uh, from this imperium international college like we can see all these uh, clubs so students like can be joined part of this right so they can learn a lot of things and everything mm -hmm. and yeah. ryan uh, i heard like that you want to share about another club as a frisbee 
right? Oh, yes, right. Uh, so, yeah. uh, wow, this is a long time coming. So I've been uh, meaning, uh, I've been wanting to uh, introduce the sport of ultimate frisbee to Imperium okay. College. So what ultimate, uh, besides, sorry, a little bit of introduction for my background, uh, besides of uh, me playing volleyball, I've played ultimate frisbee at the age of 17 onwards. And then uh, at the age of 18, I began to join uh, uh, club teams, uh, frisbee club teams in Malaysia to, to play. Oh, right. and, oh that's uh, good, man. And good. Thanks, man. And currently I'm the ambassador for the under uh, Malaysian under 24 team campaign. So right. yeah. Um, and I'll say I, I've been wanting to uh, introduce the sport ultimate frisbee to uh, Imperial College because uh, I think it's a really fun sport. So uh, what is ultimate frisbee, right? For those of you who don't know, so uh, ultimate frisbee is a game of uh, frisbee played on the field. Uh, it's a seven v seven game. So you play it using the equipment that you use is a plastic frisbee. All right. So uh, the rules are somewhat similar to rugby, except for. Uh, so in rugby, you take the ball, right? You run it into the end zone. And if you have the ball in possession and you are in the end zone, you score one point. Mm. So oh. yeah, for Frisbee, it's slightly it's similar, but without the contact, right? So every time you catch the disc, you are not allowed to move. You can only pass it to your teammates. So uh -huh. with that, you even uh, passing it, eventually one of your players catching it in the end zone. That's how you score a point. Um, a turnover happens when uh, either your op the defender gets the disc uh, when the, air, the disc is inbound or uh, the offense uh, throw the disc and then it hits the ground, right? A turnover meaning uh, offense change to defense, defense change to offense. Yeah. So why do I want to introduce uh, Ultimate Frisbee to uh, Imperial College? Because I think uh, besides just the fun of the game, uh, you also get to um, develop value uh, and help uh, gain very valuable uh, values in in the sports world or even in uh, uh, in anywhere in general, right? So because uh, frisbee, we emphasize a lot on SOTG. That's called uh, that's short for spirit of the game, right? So because uh, frisbee is played without a referee, so any mm -hmm. foul calls or any uh, technical calls on the field is called by the players and is mm -hmm. to be discussed between the people who are. Uh, who 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 are in who are called uh, who is kind of like in that situation. So for example, if I call foul on you, right? Uh, you either agree or disagree, and then we share our opinion, and then we see uh, which which one we agree with, right? So with this uh, type of uh, system, right, it requires very high integrity, very high fairness, uh, a good a good understanding of the rules of the game. Right, so all these things come when you play frisbee. It's, it's a natural thing because uh, frisbee revolves around SOTG. So when you do play frisbee, you know these are the things that you will learn and uh, and develop. Hence, uh, I would say you will develop a very uh, soothing culture in in this sport of ultimate frisbee. Right? Yes, sometimes uh, it can be bad. Right, where people will take advantage of the rules and turn it around so that they can they can gain mm. an upper hand against the opponents. Yeah. But most of the time, you know these kind of cultures are. We, we discourage in the game of ultimate frisbee. As a matter of fact, we reward those who has a high level of uh, spirit of the game. So we call that, uh, we give them the award called spirit award, right? Mm -hmm. So these mm -hmm. are teams that really display good uh, spirit of the game uh, when, when, when they are playing throughout the tournament. So yeah, uh, besides that, I think frisbee is a really fun game. It's a simple game and it's really fun. Yes. Like, uh, if you have friends who study overseas, right, like Australia or UK, mm -hmm. when they come mm -hmm. back and then they'll start talking about Frisbee, like they just go out and toss the Frisbee and then you'll be like, what's going on? Why, why the sudden enthusiasm uh, for, for a plastic plate, right? So, yes, yes. yeah, in, in UK, it's played uh, so much, you know, uh, it's one of the main sports they have in college there. Um, and in, ultimately, I think uh, it's a really... Uh, it's a really great and easy, fun way to play a sport. So like all you need for Frisbee is a disc, a field, <laughs> which we can okay. find publicly quite easily, right? And okay. then markers to set up your, your, your playing field. Or if you don't have markers, sometimes you even use bottles or slippers and just go on. Oh. Just go crazy, you know? Uh, yeah. So it's, yeah. A, it's an easy game. It's a fun game. So yeah, oh, I've been I'm very stoked to want to try to, uh rest stop to introduce this sport to uh imperium you know oh so uh, ryan i want to ask you uh yes. how many players do you need when playing frisbee 
So yeah, that's what uh, for, yeah. right for frisbee is a seven versus seven game on a full field, right? Uh, it's played usually play on a full field, but you know depending on the numbers you have, you may reduce in size, lah. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also have the indoor category, which is played on a futsal court, uh, uh futsal court or a uh, sports hall, right? Uh-huh. Uh, that would be five versus five. So it's like a mix, is it like male and female to be? Mm, we have categories uh, for men's, women's, and a mixed category. Oh, wow. Mm. I think guys, we we have to join this club. Yeah, I think so. We have to try <laughs> this club also, lah. Uh. Looks yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So easy, just just like throwing, like saying. You, know, <laughs> you need okay. skill, one, you know. You need skill to throw one. <laughs> okay, can. By by two weeks, you can learn how to throw right easily already. Two weeks. Trust me, bro. Oh, I think I think she fun. she and should be very easy lah. He play basketball ma, so you know the angle to throw already. No, no actually, as a matter of as a matter of fact, people who plays racket sports would pick up the throws much more faster because oh, really? the movement is similar, like how you. Oh, this rotation. Uh, yeah, that is how you swing your forehand for your racket. Is how we uh, throw forehand for frisbee as well. Oh, so they got the similar. They got skills. Okay. Skills to throw is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so people like uh, Shin Yu would probably be the bet uh better at boxing out people or uh <laughs> or like getting the disc in the sky. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man. This is it's really cool when I see like these mm-hmm. frisbee things. Okay, because uh even I used to say to Ryan like uh, if you want to bring up like great club or whatever you want to open it. I will be first person to be join this club. All right, okay. I don't mind to join. <laughs> I want to learn also. All right. Ah. So, so it's like uh, something is good, nice, right? So, I hope something. So this this club is going to be in all in like Imperium International College. So students all can oh. be joined part of us. Right? Yeah. Oh, Jaga. Yeah. I. I thought you are you are actually a president for football and futsal club also, right? Maybe you can yeah, just right. tell tell the viewers like about your club also. Uh okay, can actually. Okay, all right. Uh, football and futsal sure, like sure, something, sure. Yeah. something is like most like common common uh sports we can say like in yeah. the world in the, in the in the entire world like there's some going to be like favorite sports, all right? So everyone used to play and you know that's more fun. Like, so in in Imperium College, okay. Uh, first I joined in 2016. Okay, I was just as a player. I I I, I never been in a, any member or whatever thing. Okay, mm. so that was my seniors. All was there. All right, all okay, the seniors. Okay, so yeah. uh uh that time was like the futsal. Uh, futsal was like main thing. It was really really active. All right, uh, so. So uh, we was used to play, and we also used to go like a lot of tournaments and and all that, right? And Imperium uh, International College has used to be a very uh, uh, how to say like helping in like terms of giving us like a training coach and all of this, lah. All right. Um, okay. So uh, any questions? Please drop in the comment below so that we can ask like. Uh, with the presidents over here, so if there's any questions, feel free to ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of uh, handsome presidents over here, so girls can we do? <laughs> so all right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll just give like a couple of minutes, lah. Just wait and see if there's any comments. Yeah. Sure. 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 We can wait up. So that, and I think staffs also can be asked to stay in the store, right? Yeah, staff also can. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... So, Jake, maybe tell a bit more about your sports side. Normally, uh, how do you live? Uh, how's yeah? How do you separate your session for futsal and also football? Like which day you play fut- football, which day you okay, play? So it's like weekly. Uh... Two days only lah can be okay, you know, because okay. futsal is like a bit expensive. The court is really expensive. All right. Oh. Ah, football is okay. It's an open field, so uh, we can get a free field nearby lah. Okay, nearby our. Won't won't uh, you clash with other strangers? Or some football, there will be a lot of other strangers will come to play also, right? So, 
uh yella if if they want to join also it's okay we can make a friendly uh let them uh, on them like it's okay lah because as long we we did something right okay we did yes. something right uh so futsal is like football and futsal is mainly you learn about skills like how you controlling balls and stops and all all that shit the things oh. right. like ronaldo and messi ah can we call them lah okay but <laughs> At least, lah, student can be learn. That's the thing. Okay, so we have a question from Lai Kapo. Is there any proper medic being assigned to the clubs? Clubs, ah, uh, how about you guys? Well, actually, by badminton club, there is, lah. Because I tell you, I tell you guys, I share my experience. Ah, uh, basically, ah, uh, I think during that two months when I just started badminton, ah, uh, my club is mostly playing competitive as well. Only some is recreation. Ah, uh, so. During that time, we have around three injuries, lah. Uh, cool, cool. One of my teammates dislocated his shoulder two times. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. Oh, that Yikes. that hurts like hell, lah. So I'm okay. he's currently still recovering, and mm-hmm. hopefully he's doing better, lah. And the third injury is actually, I I injured myself, lah. I during competitive, I actually torn my ligament at my ankle for bad landing. So currently, I'm basically out of commission. For badminton, for uh, I think now it's one month lah. I think another two more weeks, I won't be playing badminton lah. Alright. <laughs> so actually, I our team medic there is also lah. Luckily, the time we have a medic, then mm-hmm. uh he also help us to buy ice, buy ice, just apply some medicine, just to for me uh for my ankle, I just need he help me to apply ice and just wrap my. Wrap my ankle with a bandage, lah, to prevent the swollen from getting bigger. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so what about, yeah, what about yeah. you guys? Uh, you guys have any any medic in your club? Uh, For most clubs, uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we 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 present. We assure you that. Uh, yeah. So we will be the medic in in any situation because like having to hire <laughs> medic, it's a little yes. bit expensive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but then then own, so own medic lah. Own medic. Self medic. Yeah. yeah. So friends, most of us like experience. we learn how to, correct. So like we've treated our own, uh, uh sprained ankles before. We've treated uh cut wounds mm-hmm. and all. So we are pretty experienced in our, ourselves. But uh, most importantly, if we do encounter a serious problem, I think we always have the emergency number. We would know how to contact the ambulance yeah, and whatnot. True, true. Right. Uh, in a series of concussions, we we would know what to uh. Uh, we know what to do kind of thing yeah. uh, worst case scenario we could uh, look for someone who are in charge of the facility to come and help okay. us right for like indoor badminton I'm pretty sure they have a med kit somewhere around, along the lines but yeah these uh, are cool. precautions we'll take lah, right, yeah. to ensure the safety of our fellow members alright so thanks Ryan thanks and to sharing all this like you know experience and all All right. So since we know the sports clubs are the great addition of uh, to every student's life, okay, kindly join Imperial International College, okay, to involve and uh, benefit more. All right. So, uh, so that's all for today. All right. So thank you. Yeah. Thank and you have guys. a great day. Viewers. Thank you, viewers. All right. Join us. Uh, and thank right. you, Imperium International, yeah. for, for the opportunity to share. <laughs> Join mine first. <laughs>